Chris. He sent me to check on you. But it... Oh, I don't understand. What had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife? To leave his babe? His mansions and his title in a place from whence himself does fly? He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. For the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear, and nothing is the love, as little is the wisdom, and the flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cousin, you must school yourself but for your husband. He is noble, wise, judicious, best knows the fits of the season. I, I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves when we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea. Each way and none, I, I take my leave of you. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things of the worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. Fathered he is, and yet he's fatherless. So much a fool should I stay longer. It would be your discomfort and my disgrace. I take my leave at once. Bless you, fair dame. I am not known to you, but in your state of honor, I am perfect. I doubt that some danger does approach you merely. And if you will take a homely woman's advice, be not found here hence with your little one. To frighten you thus, methinks I am too savage. But to do worse, were fell cruelty which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now, I am in this earthly world, where to do harm is often laudable, and to do good is sometime accounted dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say that I have done no harm. Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayst find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shad-hearted villain. What you egg, young fry of treachery? She's killed me, mother. Run away, I pray you. Murder. Treason. Cousin? Let us seek out some desolate shade and sleep our sad bosom empty. Let us hold fast the mortal sword and bestride our fallen birthdom. Each new morn. New widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face that resounds as if it felt with Scotland and yelled out like syllable of dolor. What I believe, I'll wail. This sole tyrant, whose name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him. You have loved him well. He had not touched you yet. But I am young, and something you may deserve of him through me, wisdom, to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. But I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Though all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. 
I have lost my hope. Perchance even there I do find my doubts. Why in that rawness you left wife and child. Such motives. Such strong knots of love. Without leave taking, I pray you. Let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but my own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I may think. Very well, lady. I be not the villain thou thinkest. Be not offended. I speak not in absolute fear of you. Our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each day a new gash is added to her wounds. I think with all, there would be hands uplifted at my right. And here, from gracious England, have I offered goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it upon my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, more suffer, and more country, and more sundry ways than ever, by he that shall succeed. It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so crafted, that when opened, Black Megabeth will seem as pure as snow, and the state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless harms. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil to talk the evils of Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. There's no bottom, none, in my voluptuousness that oppose my will. But fear not yet. To take upon you what is yours, you may convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty, and yet seem cold the time you may so hoodwink. With this there grows a more staunchless avarice, that were I queen, I would cut off the nobles for their land. Desire his jewels in his other's house, and his more having would be sauce to make me hunger more. I would forge quarrels with the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper. Grows with more pernicious fruit than summer seeing lust. And it hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet do not fear. Scotland hath hoistens to fill your will of your mere own. All these are portable with other graces weighed. Yet I have none of these king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, loneliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of several crime, acting in many ways. Nay, if I had power, I would pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar into universal peace, and confound all unity on earth. Scotland, Scotland. If such a one be fit to govern, if such a one be fit to govern, speak I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live. Oh, my hope ends here. Macduff, thy noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, and reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. For, for even now I put myself to thy direction. What I am truly 
is yours and my poor country's to command. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once. It's hard to reconcile. See who comes here. Come in. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. Good God the times remove the means that makes us strangers. Amen. Damn Scotland where it did. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. Cannot be called our mother but our grave. Where nothing but who knows nothing is once seen to smile. Where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made not marked. Dead men's knell is scarce asked for who. And good men's lives expire before the flowers in their cap, dying or ere they sicken. No relation. Too nice, and yet too true. What's the newest grief? That of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker. Each minute teems a new one. How's my wife? Why, well. And my child? Well, too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace? No. They were well at peace when I did leave them. Be not a niggard of your speech. How goes it? When I came hither to transport the tidings, which I have heavily borne, there ran a rumor of many worthy fellows that were out, which was, to my belief, witness the rather, for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be it their comfort. We are coming thither. Would I could answer this comfort with the like. But I have words that would be held out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them. What concern they? No mind that's honest, but in it shares some woe, though this main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. I guess at it. Your castle surprised, your wife and babe savagely slaughtered, to relate the manner were on the quarry of these murdered deer, to add the death of you. Merciful heaven! My child, too. Wife, child, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence. My wife killed, too. I have said. Be comforted. Let us make medicines of our great revenge, to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. Oh, my pretty ones, did you say all? Oh, hell kite. All? What, all my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop? Dispute it. Gentle heavens. Cut short all intermission, front to front. Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself within my sword's length, say. He escape and forgive him too. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready, and our lack is none but the leave taking. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. Yet, here's a spot. Out, damn spot. Out, I say. One, two. Why, then tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie. A soldier and a field? What need we fear who knows it, when none can call our power to account? Yet, who would have thought the old man had so much blood in him? The Thane of Fife had a wife, 
And where is she now? No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all with your starting. Ears smell of blood still. All the perfumes in Arabia could not sweeten this little hand. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again. Banquo is buried. She cannot come out of her grave. To bed, to bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come, come, come. Come, give me your hand. What is done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. Word with you, ma'am. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Mm -hmm. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery ere the court of us. Shall we?